Uh, I would like to, before we go any further, uh, acknowledge that the land that we meet on today is the traditional lands of the Ghana people and we respect their spiritual relationship with their country. We also acknowledge that the Ghana people are the custodians of the Adelaide region and that their cultural and heritage beliefs are still as important to the living Ghana people today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the state public sector, boy, there's a hell of a lot of you, isn't there? Uh, Senior Management Council of the State Government of South Australia, the Institute of Public Administration Australia, members and partners, I wish to welcome you to this event today. We are, of course, talking about gender equality. We were, and I called it last year, the first government to set a target around achieving gender equality. That target was for 50-50 representation by 2014. We haven't quite got there yet. It's a government target that we haven't achieved. Uh, that's a remarkable thing. Um, <laughs> but we're working on it. And I think that's really important. And I think that a show of hands today, just having you all here is magnificent because we need to continue to talk about gender equality or gender inequality. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you here to the Adelaide Oval. And as you walk up the, well, you don't walk up the escalators, you travel up the escalators, but as you look around at the Adelaide Oval, there are so many photographs of men playing bloke sports. So it's traditionally a real men's place, the Adelaide Oval, but hopefully with women's AFL, within the next few years, we're going to have more and more pictures of women on the walls. And I don't know about you guys, but it gives me great pleasure to see such inroads that have been taken into the AFL. And I'd just like to applaud all of those women. And we need to get behind that sport because that is a real, for me, that is a real example of how far we've come when it comes to gender equality. Um, I would like to acknowledge the efforts of the Office for the Public Sector, along with IPA, for collaborating to bring this event to you today. It really is a tremendous event, so thank you so much for putting it together. I would also like to welcome commissioners, chief executives from the state government, and representatives from PwC, Woolman's Lawyers, and Flinders University. These organisations Organisations are IPA partners and they help make events such as this one possible. So just to note, their sponsors, can we have a round of applause for them, please? I would also like to thank our impressive and distinguished speakers, the Honourable Julia Gillard, the Honourable Kaya Ma, MLC, Dr Margaret Byrne, David Reynolds, Scott Ashby, Gary Edwards and the magnificent Irma Ranieri. Uh, thank you all so much for being here today. Now, normally at this point, I, on the, and certainly on the run sheet, it says that I have to draw your attention to the fact that if there's an emergency, you're all to follow me and make an orderly exit out of the building. But considering that we're having Julia Gillard here today, I'm just gonna say at this point that if there is an emergency, please follow her. Because if the former Prime Minister of Australia can't get us out of here, we're all screwed. <laughs> Our scoreboard today, again, normally with the names of lots of blokes up there, has got women 50% or women 50, men 50, how's that? So please take a photo of that today and post it on social media. We're not going to ask you to turn off your telephones. We're, of course, going to ask you to turn them to silent. But we would like you to use social media if you can. Our hashtag for the day is hashtag level playing field. So please tweet accordingly. Um, I'd like to now introduce our first speaker for this morning. Unfortunately, Premier Jay Weatherall uh, couldn't make it here today. He had to go off to the panel beater, but instead, <laughs> just pause for that one. Uh, I couldn't help it, I'm sorry. I'm known for my crap gags, particularly first thing in the morning. Instead, he has sent a magnificent representative, uh, the Honourable Kaya Ma, MLC. He grew up in country South Australia uh, and he graduated from Adelaide University with law and economics degrees before practising law for the Crown Solicitor's Office. When Labor won state government in 2002, Kaya took on the role of Chief of Staff to Minister Terry Roberts, who held the portfolios of 
Regional Affairs, Aboriginal Affairs and Correctional Services. He then went on to serve as State Secretary of the Labor Party before entering the Legislative Council in 2012. Upon the re-election of the Labor Government in 2014, Kayam took the role of Parliamentary Secretary to the member, Minister for Agriculture, Food and Fisheries. As of February 2015, he was elevated to the Cabinet and is currently has got a massive portfolio. He is the Minister for Manufacturing and Innovation, Automotive Transformation and Aboriginal Affairs and Reconciliation. He also took on the additional roles of Minister for Employment and Minister for Science and Information Economy. Uh, he is here today with his lovely mother as his date, which I think is magnificent. So please put your hands together for, for the Honourable Kaya Mark. I firstly want to acknowledge we meet here today on the land of the Ghana people. All of this, all of this state, all of this country always has been, always will be Aboriginal land. It is a distinct pleasure to be here representing uh, the Premier Jay Weatherall and it's a distinct honour to take part in a forum with uh, a person who I consider one of the greatest leaders of our time, Julia Gillard. Amanda mentioned my, uh, I'm accompanied here today by my mum and I want to briefly mention my own experiences and understanding of gender equality and leadership. Um, mum's here today and I want to acknowledge her role in guiding and shaping my views and particularly my understanding from the very earliest age of gender equality. And I don't get the opportunity so you'll all have to let me indulge and talk about some of those experiences and how that shaped my views today. Uh, my family moved to South Australia in the mid-1970s, I think down at Darlington before moving to the Adelaide Hills, and I'm often told a story about uh, having been there a week or so, the, the old uh, woman from next door bought a casserole, and my dad answered the door and got given a casserole, and my bemused dad wondered what the casserole's for, and the, uh, the woman next door explained, well, we've seen you for the last week or so hanging out the washing. Your wife's obviously sick, so we wanted to give you something uh, <laughs> for you. Since the mid-1970s, things have changed, but not enough. Growing up on the rare occasions in the household where religion was discussed, it was always drilled in that God is she. She said this or she's done that. And I reckon I know every word and scratch on the title track of Helen Reddy's I Am Woman album. <laughs> that song probably forms the biggest part of the, child, uh, the soundtrack of my childhood. And I have a memory at school, I'm guessing it's probably like primary school, feminism, feminism was being discussed. Upon being asked and not really understanding what the word meant, I think I replied to a question, uh, no, no, I'm not a feminist. I think maybe I thought feminism had something to do with being feminine. Being given a definition, something like, you know, feminism's advocating for the social, political, legal and economic rights of women equal to those of men, I replied, yeah, of course I'm a feminist, but isn't everyone? As I got older, it became apparent not everyone shares those seemingly self-obvious views. Things have changed, but not enough. My mum's experience to me in gender equality shone through in the action she's taken, what she's done and her leadership in her working life. Our Viv Ma for many years was a social worker, then administrator of the women's shelter in Mount Gambia, ensuring some of the most marginalised women in Mount Gambia had the opportunity to take their rightful place in society. She then went on to be a social worker at Pangula Manamurda, the Aboriginal health service in Mount Gambia, and I couldn't count the number of young Naranjeri and Bowendick women in Mount Gambia who've... Uh, told me that Aunty Viv, my mum, uh, without her support, they wouldn't be going to TAFE, starting that job, getting their kids back. I want to thank my mum for the, uh, in what she's done, what she said, and how she's led in, uh, and given me a very deep understanding of leadership and gender equality. Uh, <laughs> And I, yeah, I, I'll concede it's probably a bit strange having a bloke up here well, giving them welcoming address for today. But I, yeah, I'll counter that by saying I strongly believe gender equality can only happen if we're all in this together. Yeah, now understanding what the word means, I'm a feminist and I'm a strong and dedicated feminist. As Amanda, as Amanda talked about, this is an apt venue to hold this summit because in 2017, we finally recognised at the highest level of the competition, women in the AFL. And I say this because, uh, and I say it's a great thing because I know from my own personal experience as a goal umpire for the Aboriginal Power Cup for the last few years, there are many young women who are exceptionally fierce footy players and I, I don't particularly like standing behind the goal with uh, balls being kicked at about 
200 kilometres an hour with young women from all around South Australia. And as a lifelong Richmond fan, it pains me to say so, but I particularly commend the outstanding efforts of the Adelaide Crows in the AFL women's competition. <laughs> Under the strong leadership of Beck Goddard, the team has inspired the state. The AFL Women's League are playing fast, skillful and determined footy. It's drawing massive crowds to the game and the Crows are well placed perhaps to hold a grand final right here at Adelaide Oval. Uh, and most important of all, it's encouraging girls and women to play our one true Australian code of sport. Female participation in this game has increased remarkably. Now 27% of all Aussie rules, player are women, uh, rules players are women. Sport plays a strong role in many areas. Leadership development for girls and women is going to increase with an increasing role in footy and sports in general. That's why I'm proud we've recognised this and in the last budget the State Government put $10 million towards upgrading and in some cases starting the construction from scratch of amenities for women's local sports, things like change rooms. We've also released a Women in Sport Task Force Action Plan. That strategy aims to improve gender equality in sport and to increase participation for girls and women. Time and time again, women have shown the way. Women often respect each other's strengths, nurture each other's weaknesses, support, encourage and work together. And to me, that's the essence of leadership. As the largest employer in South Australia, the state government is in an excellent position to foster leadership amongst women. I know the Premier is a strong supporter of the efforts to improve gender equality in our public sector and to have more women in positions of leadership. Things have improved, but not enough. I know the Premier said that it's simply fair and just that women have the capacity to fulfil their potential, unhindered by barriers and bias of any kind. But for, for the non-believers who are looking for any further arguments in favour of uh, women in leadership, there are plenty available. There is lots of evidence. We know, for example, at the workplace level, gender diverse organisations are more effective, productive and prosperous. We know that diversity can lead to higher revenues, lower costs, greater innovation and better employee engagement. There's also a solid body of evidence showing that greater female participation in leadership boosts an organisation's adapt adaptability. We know the South Australian economic cl uh, climate is changing and we need to be more innovative. It is often the single most valuable trait we can have. And the government's determined to improve gender equality in the public sector and it has policies to bring this about. Uh, pretty soon, uh, uh, David Reynolds and Scott Ashby will be making a presentation in, quite, in some detail in relation to this, so I won't steal their thunder and I'll leave uh, that for, uh, for uh, those speakers to talk about. What I will say, though, is that the, figures, the latest figures are in, in SA are OK, but they're not brilliant. The rate at which women are entering the executive ranks in the government has increased in the past year, but as Amanda said, we haven't yet reached our target of 50% representation of women in executive roles. We need to keep pushing ahead. When it comes to achieving gender equality, the moral and economic arguments are convincing, the evidence is in, and the path is known and clear. The key to, is to concentrate on now getting the results. Uh, Partly through the Office of the Public Sector, we've introduced and implemented a range of measures. 50-50 succession planning, training to address unconscious uh, bias, domestic violence leave for public sector employees, and, uh, and importantly, a reverse mentoring program, which sees aspiring executive women mentoring men. And that's really important. Uh, as as, as uh, the strongest feminist I know, my mum has uh, said, she's got three sons and eight grandsons. And she's fine with that because it's the men who need to change, not the women. <laughs> We've also established the Premier's Women Directory, which contains uh, more than 500 CVs at, to, uh, to help with increasing women's appointments on uh, boards and committees. The government's seeking to support women in uh, a range of practical ways as well. Uh, these include safety and wellbeing, uh, as I mentioned, the Premier's made a, has a leadership role in COAG in domestic violence, and among other things, uh, it's outlined a multi-agency protective service which aims to address domestic violence at the earliest possible um, stages within uh, workers in the public sector. We also want to help women through investing in women's futures, the Investing in Women's Futures blueprint to address economic disadvantage. 
This is particularly important because women continue to lag behind men when it comes to earning and participation. South Australian men earn on average 14% more than South Australian women, and that's simply unacceptable. We need not only to ensure wage parity, but ensure women have the opportunity and are able to enter the workforce. Quite apart from uh, the virtue of creating opportunities for women, it has the, uh, the evidences in that it is also good for our economy. I encourage you all to think about the women that you know and what your role is in providing diversity and leadership. I've greatly appreciated the chance to speak with you this morning and to represent the Premier. I want to uh, thank former Prime Minister Gillard in advance for her presentation and I commend you all coming together today to examine, debate and advance the cause of gender equality, especially in the public sector. South Australia has done some good work in this area, but there is still a lot more to be done. For our part, we need to achieve much more if we're to fully achieve the potential of this state. We need to achieve much more. We need to fully benefit from the leadership of women. And for our part, the state government will do what we can to keep supporting girls, women in every way. Thank you.